Good Saturday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. We have lots to talk about in today's video, including your Easter weekend forecast, what you can expect all across the country this weekend. And then we're looking ahead to an interesting storm next week brewing in the Gulf of Mexico and potentially even the mainland southeast United States. We'll get into those details and then go over your long range weather pattern. Are there more severe weather outbreaks later on in April? We'll dig into those details later later on in this video. If you guys are not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, be sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you get all of my daily weather forecast updates each and every morning at 9 a.m. on this channel. I cover, I cover Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics here on this channel during tropical weather season, so I definitely appreciate all the new subscribers out there, and be sure to hit the like button as well, the thumbs up button down below the video. It helps more than you could expect as well, so I definitely appreciate it. But going here through this weekend, we got the ridge of high pressure building across Southern Canada and much of the mainland United States here. We have zonal flow from west to east, so we have Pacific air moving across the country today and on Sunday, but we'll also see warming temperatures as well underneath the ridge of high pressure here where you see all the reds across southern Canada and much of the United States. We got the trough up here across Alaska and a trough up here to the east across eastern Canada, but again, right in between, that's where we have the building heights for the warm temperatures. So your high temperatures this afternoon, we'll be seeing 60s and 70s all across the Great Plains today, some 60s up here in the places like Chicago, getting in there towards southeastern Minnesota, definitely enjoying some spring-like temperatures. But as we go into Easter Sunday now, these are your high temperatures building into the 70s up here into portions of Iowa, Nebraska, getting into northern Illinois here, and then much of the 60s pressing farther east into the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic on Easter Sunday. So definitely get outside and enjoy the warmer temperatures because most of the middle of the country where the warmer temperatures will be underneath the ridge will be dry. Lots of sunshine here. But we are watching a couple systems. Our first system we're watching up here with some rain and snow across the Pacific Northwest. We'll get to that. And then also a stalled out frontal boundary across the southeastern United States that's going to be moving slowly south and east through the next couple of days. That will be bringing some heavier rainfall across portions of the coastal Carolinas down into Florida and Georgia going in toward Easter Sunday itself. So looking here first across the northwestern United States, we got a strong 973 millibar low just off the west coast of Canada here, just west of British Columbia, and that is going to be funneling in a lot of moisture here through the weekend into early next week across the west coast, but in particular, the Pacific Northwest. So you start to see that atmospheric river of moisture as we go through the day today, but watch how it really starts to become more abundant on Sunday, your Easter Sunday, with the greens and even some blues out here. Those are three to four standard deviations above climatology for precipitable water anomalies out there. And that really only continues into early next week on Monday, April 10th. So this is going to be funneling in a lot of moisture. So this afternoon, we're going to be seeing some rain showers. Initially, this is going to be limited to the coastline there of western Washington State up into British Columbia and then maybe northwestern Oregon this afternoon and into tonight. So this ain't going to be too big of a deal across the Pacific Northwest uh, going through the next 24 hours. But it's really starting on Easter Sunday morning. This is when we start to see that atmospheric river come into play with a lot of heavy snow, especially up there in the British Columbia getting into southwestern Alberta, Canada. We got some higher elevation snows in Washington State as well, but the rain is really going to take over for places like Seattle, down into northwestern Oregon on Sunday morning. That continues to move even farther inland across northwestern Oregon into much of Washington State and again into British Columbia on Easter Sunday night, and that really continues in much of the same areas going into Monday morning on April 10th. So here's what you can expect for your total rainfall accumulation from now through early next week on Monday, April 10th. Decent rains up here across western Washington State, western portions of Oregon here. We're talking about you in Seattle getting about one to three inches of rain. As you go farther west from Seattle there, closer to the coastline, we're going to be seeing even higher amounts, potentially up to near four, five inches in some of those areas in wa uh, western Washington State. Farther south into the Portland, Oregon area, we could be seeing an inch and a half, maybe two inches of rain. Farther 
another south toward Medford, Oregon. A little lighter amounts, but still generally a half inch to three quarters of an inch for you going through your Monday morning time frame. Looking at the snowfall accumulation now. So from now through Monday morning, again, not seeing much in the way of snow except for northern Washington State and the higher elevations could be seeing a few inches. But if we zoom it out here, much more of the snowfall will be falling up into the coastline there of British Columbia and western Canada. Those areas up just to the outside of Vancouver could be seeing over a foot of snow falling within the next you know few days here getting through that Monday time frame. So definitely watch it up there. But across the southeast, we did mention some unsettled times down here. So we got that slow moving stationary boundary or cold front across the southeast going through portions in North Florida this afternoon that slowly meanders farther south, reaching the Miami area down there toward Key West Florida by Easter Sunday night. And that's going to be bringing some unsettled times for places like Florida and the southeast. You see the precipitable, the precipitable water values this afternoon afternoon. You definitely see those darker blues and purples here. That's one and a half to two inches of precipitable water. So any shower, any storm that moves over that area will be very efficient rainfall producers. And that just continues into Sunday, but farther to the south ahead of that surface boundary as it pushes across South Florida. So looking here this afternoon, we got a widespread shield of rain across all of the Carolinas here into much of Georgia, including the Atlanta area, and then maybe some more spotty showers and storms across northwest Florida toward the Panama City, Tallahassee regions this afternoon, continuing seeing some moderate steady rains across the eastern Carolinas and central Carolinas through the Raleigh region, Wilmington, getting down through Columbia, South Carolina, the Myrtle Beach area, Charleston. Those areas will be seeing some heavier rain through this evening. And then finally starting to see that heavy shield of rain push off the coast and into the western Atlantic by early Sunday morning on your Easter and more spotty showers near that frontal boundary as it pushes from north to south across the peninsula there of Florida. And then that will cross into South Florida, maybe a couple of scattered showers and storms to be watched out for in the Tampa area, Naples down into the Miami region and towards Key West. Definitely watch out for that if you have outdoor plans on Easter Sunday afternoon. And then going into Monday morning again with that frontal boundary in the vicinity, I still think there could be a couple of showers and storms across Central and South Florida, especially with peak daytime heating into Monday afternoon on April 10th. But with that said, with that system moving so slow, it's going to be able to produce a lot of rainfall. We showed you the precipitable water anomalies. It's going to be high, so we're going to see a lot of water falling from the skies here going through the next couple of days. So a good one to three inches, a good swath of rain here across especially the Carolinas, the Raleigh area down into Columbia, South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, Charleston. You guys could be seeing one to three inches of widespread rain going through Monday and it's still those heavy amounts. The Atlanta area up near two inches and just south of Birmingham, Tuscaloosa into central portions of Alabama could be seeing over an inch of rain and then some heavier amounts down into northwest Florida near the Pensacola, Panama City and Tallahassee regions going through Monday morning. And again, the rainfall will be a, a very sharp cutoff with it as we go through Monday morning. So as you cross over from North Carolina into Virginia, you're going to go from over an inch to, of rain and then crossing into southern Virginia to almost nothing. So a very sharp cutoff with the gradient in the rain going through early next week. But nevertheless, it does look like flash flooding could be an issue through today into your Easter Sunday. So definitely watch out for that. We got a marginal risk of flash flooding across the Carolinas, much of Georgia, North Florida, Central and Southern Alabama, and then getting in toward the Gulf Coast states down here and towards Southern portions of my, uh, Mississippi and Southern portions of Louisiana toward the New Orleans region during that time frame. But if you guys want additional weather forecast updates, be sure to follow me on Twitter at hweatherforecast. 20. Again, HWeather420 to get more additional weather forecast updates. I will be updating that very frequently over the next several weeks. But as we head forward into the forecast here, as we get through next week, we're going to still see that ridge of high pressure build across the mainland United States. And it'll slowly meander from west to east going toward the middle of the week and then ending up over the Great Lakes region by Wednesday, April 12th. And you see a couple of interesting features here. Just to the west, you see a 
trough moving in across the Pacific Northwest, likely bringing some more unsettled times toward the middle of next week on Wednesday and uh, time frame across those areas again from Washington State down through Oregon and underneath the ridge. We're opening up for potentially a low pressure system to develop near the Gulf Coast regions as well. We'll get to that in just a moment. But underneath those ridge of high that ridge of high pressure, we're gonna see some warmer temperatures. So spring will prevail across the mainland United States, widespread 70s on Monday, some 80s being found across the Great Plains on Tuesday with widespread 70s across all of the eastern two-thirds of the country for the most part, in exception to the northeast and those snowpack areas up into the upper Midwest. And looking here Tuesday afternoon, look at this guys, a hundred degrees in the Phoenix, Arizona region on Tuesday afternoon and surrounding areas into Southern California near Death Valley, that's where we could be expecting some very dry spring-like heat down here on Tuesday, April 11th. So if you're in the Phoenix area, get ready for your big heat wave that you've been seeing here um, that you haven't seen in a long time. So this is 100 degrees on Tuesday. And still even on Wednesday, 96 down into the Phoenix area and then widespread 70s and 80s actually getting into the Midwest here on Wednesday and with rapid snow melt to the north you have to be watching out for some river flooding along those tributary rivers and the Mississippi River through Wisconsin, Iowa and Illinois going through the middle of the month of April but as we've been talking about we got that Gulf of Mexico tropical system that's kind of looming down here across portions of the Gulf Coast this is going to be having you know some tropical features but this is actually marked as a subtropical storm. So you do see that there is some rainfall, mainly just off the coast or kind of hugging up against the New Orleans region on Wednesday, the middle of the week. And it'll start to inch its way farther to the north, still a 1,009 millibar low pressure center by Thursday. And then by Friday, it does approach the coast there toward the Hattiesburg area or Mobile, Alabama as a 1,010 millibar low, pretty weak system overall. So I do expect this to be more more of a rainmaker than anything wind-wise going into our mid and late week next week. But you do see the EPS ensemble members are showing a pretty good agreement that this will be just off the coast here of the Gulf Coast of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Northwest Florida on Thursday, the 13th, and also good agreement amongst the GEFS ensemble members as well with that generally uh, generalized same location across the Northern Gulf right near the Gulf Coast by that Thursday, April 13th time frame. But why it's such a big deal is that the waters in the Gulf of Mexico is absolutely boiling right now. We are seeing very warm sea surface temperature anomalies in the Gulf. So any low pressure system, well, either if it's in the middle of the Gulf or in the northern Gulf, close to the coast there, we still have to watch it because you see near the coast, it's still pretty warm as well. So any residence time longer with these low pressure systems over the open waters could be spelling trouble for some rapid intensification at least moving forward potentially not only just in April here but into May and the upcoming hurricane season so that will be something to watch as well but this like I said will be more of a rainmaker you do see some heavier rains down across the southeast primarily north Florida there southern Alabama Mississippi and then southern Georgia on the EPS guidance and really the GEFS ensemble members are pretty much in the same in the same boat there as well with a lot of heavy rain across the southeast again in Florida, Georgia, portions of Alabama and Mississippi during that April 13th through the 15th time frame right toward the middle of the month. But as we go toward late week, we got another system we're watching. This one's going to kind of dive farther to the south. This is a low pressure down across southern portions of Canada, the Baja of California, Canada, California, the, the Baja of, Cal of California as well. This is on Friday, April 14th. And this is going to be a cutoff low pressure system moving eastward across the southern four corners on Saturday the next weekend here on the 15th and then kind of be cut off from the main flow again even as we go through Sunday so this means it's going to be a slow mover so on Friday we see that low down here trying to develop across the four corners region on Friday then it starts to move across the southern four corners into West Texas by Saturday next weekend on April 15th bringing some widespread um, kind of monsoonal type 
type rainfall down here to the portions of Arizona and New Mexico. The panhandle of Texas into western Oklahoma, maybe a few thunderstorms by next weekend. And then more widespread precipitation on Sunday, April 16th across the panhandle of Oklahoma, Texas, western and central Texas, maybe some snow in the higher elevations up here into southern and southeastern Colorado, just outside the Denver area. And then even on Monday, you see more widespread rain now moving east toward the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex on the 17th and into much of Oklahoma here and even down toward the Rio Grande Valley, the eighth places that haven't seen a lot of rain this year so far. So definitely some good news there. And it will be coming with a lot of plentiful moisture. So from Friday the 14th through Tuesday the 18th, look at the widespread heavy rainfall here across the map, across portions of Texas, western Oklahoma, Colorado into New Mexico. And if we zoom it in here, many areas, the Amarillo area, Wichita Falls, Dallas, Fort Worth, back here toward the Austin, San Antonio regions, Brownsville, Texas as well, um, El Paso, Texas, all these areas could be seeing some very beneficial rain going forward with one to at least three inches of rain, maybe even higher as we get closer. This still could change as it is still a week or so out. And this is very beneficial to the drought. You see the newest drought monitor that was released uh, on Thursday, April 6th here. And you can see that this is actually a very good news for the drought across uh, portions of Oklahoma, New Mexico, Texas, or anywhere we can get it out here because we still have moderate, severe, extreme, and even some areas, exceptional drought into these areas. So definitely some benefit official news moving forward. Now we have to talk about the long range weather pattern. So this is April 22nd, all the way through the opening days of May through May 5th. You see an interesting pattern start to take shape again. And this, if it looks familiar, it does. Cause we just got out of a weather pattern similar to this with troughs in the West and ridging in the East. And this does show that toward the end of April with above normal temperatures across the Eastern two thirds of the country. And then the western third of the country actually remaining below normal across California and the west coast towards that uh, April 22nd and May 5th time frame. And this is very concerning moving forward. So this is the 500 millibar height anomalies. You could see with the deeper blues out west, that's where the troughs could be late April and then the ridging across the east. And that's where we're going to see the warmer temperatures reside going toward late April and probably the first few days of May as well especially across the Great Plains and portions of the east. And those dew point numbers will be rising. Those temperatures here will be climbing into the 60s for dew points, potentially as far north as the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Central Plains going toward late April, lifting farther north than we have seen so far this year. And why this is concerning, late April, we got a trough in the west bringing the cooler anomalies, and then we got a ridge in the east bringing the warmer anomalies northward. We got a battle going on here in the middle of the country with the warmer and cooler temperatures, that's likely where we're going to see a low pressure systems develop toward late April. And this could spell the risk for more severe weather outbreaks potentially across the Great Plains. We could have some gr classic Great Plains setups toward late April, potentially even lifting farther north at this time as well. With those dew points lifting farther north into the Midwest and the Great Lakes, I expect potentially some severe weather outbreaks again late April across portions of maybe even the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, and Illinois as well towards that time frame. So this will be something to keep an eye on. Just keep it in the back of your mind that, hey, late April, we might have to start seeing some more severe weather across the region, and we'll keep you covered. Well, thank you so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. Remember to like the video down below. Give me a thumbs up. Live Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new. And hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Saturday. A great rest of your Easter weekend, everybody. And I will see you all in the next video.